All right. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about improper integrals. I want to start talking to you about an integral that there's technically clearly something wrong with. And that's the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx. Okay. If you just completely ignore the fact that there's a vertical asymptote in the middle of the region of integration and just try to use the fundamental theorem, well, then you'd end up with that there was negative two units of area. But that's just clearly not what's happening, right? It's definitely going to be a positive area because this is a strictly positive function. So it's like, what's going on here? So if we go back to the fundamental theorem of calculus and we look at really like the fine print in there, the conditions of the theorem, we need the continuity of the integrand over the entire region of integration. If we don't have that continuity, then that theorem does not hold. And that's why we're ending up with some like negative number here. It's not because the fundamental theorem doesn't work. It's because the conditions weren't met. Now, before I go back and do a little more investigation on that integral I was talking about, I need to define an improper integral for you. The integral is going to be improper if either of the bounds or both of them are infinite or if there's a vertical asymptote either at kind of the boundary of the region of integration or in the interior of the region of integration. Anywhere there's a vertical asymptote that we're integrating over, that's going to cause our integral to be improper. But I got good news for you. We can compute improper integrals by turning them into limits of definite integrals. So in terms of that integral I was talking about earlier, and I'm just only going to talk about half of it for right now, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx, we can write that as the limit of the integral from a to 1 of 1 over x squared dx as a approaches 0 from the positive side. Okay. Now, we're probably not going to always write it as the limit of an integral, but I'll show you how that's going to go here in a second. If we were tasked with computing this integral in class, you know, especially in like a free response setting where someone was going to grade your work, we need to realize what is causing this integral to be improper, and that's the zero, the division by zero. So if I wanted to compute this integral, just like normal, I'd follow the three-step process. Step one, find an antiderivative. Well, an antiderivative for 1 over x squared is an antiderivative for x to the negative 2. That's negative x to the negative 1 which I can write as negative 1 over x. And then, well, you know, since we're dealing with infinities in places where we're dividing by 0, we can't just plug in infinity. We can't just divide by 0 freely. We have to turn these things into a limit. At this point, we haven't really plugged anything in yet, so I don't think we need to turn it into a limit. But at the next step, that's where we're going to have to use a limit. And in AP Calculus, I'll tell you, on the free response problems that I've seen that involve improper integration, they have that note that's like in separation of variables. If you don't use the limit notation, you get no credit. So consider yourself sufficiently warned. You, it's not an option. It's not like, oh, you know, I know I'm supposed to turn this into a limit, but I'll get the right answer, and it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. You have to transform these improper integrals into limits. So as the limit as a approaches 0, of negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1 over a. And as a gets closer and closer to 0, negative 1 over a is getting closer to negative infinity. Okay? So I'm subtracting something that's getting closer to negative infinity. Well, I'm going to say this limit fails to exist. And what I need you to know is that if a limit or if an integral doesn't exist, we call that diverges. So that integral diverges. But this makes a little more sense because this limit is approaching positive infinity, which is what the amount of area you, you might figure would be underneath the graph of 1 over x squared between x equals 0 and x equals 1. But believe it or not, it's not always going to be an infinite amount of area when you're working up against a vertical aspect. For example, the integral from 1 to 5 of 1 over the square root of x minus 1 dx. This one is going to be finite. This is going to, that limit is going to exist. Okay, so I'm going to, first I might identify what's causing this to be an improper integral because I don't see an infinity in my bounds of integration. It's this 1 because if I have x equaling 1, then 1 over the square root of x minus 1 is 1 over 0. Division by 0 makes the integral improper. So I'm going to start by finding an antiderivative. But maybe even before I do that, I might rewrite this as a power of x minus 1. Okay. 
I'm going to write it as the negative one half power, negative because it's in the denominator, and one half because it's a square root. So I can find an antiderivative for this. Okay, add one to the power, divide by the new power, and let x run from one to five. Now still, the thing that's troublesome here is that x equals one. So I just am going to keep track of that because that's going to be the thing that's going to correspond to what I'm doing with the limit. So it's the limit of, well, the half power is the square root, so I might call that 2 times the square root of 5 minus 1 minus 2 times the square root of a minus 1 as a approaches 1 from the positive side. And if you think about it, what's going to happen to that square root of a minus 1 is a gets closer and closer to 1. Well, the square root's going to get closer and closer to taking the square root of 0. So I'm going to say that this is equal to 2 times the square root of 4 minus 2 times the square root of 0. And well, that's just going to equal 4. And so this one did have a finite amount of area up against a vertical asymptote. Another couple of pretty basic examples for you are going to be the integral from 0 to 1 and the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And so whereas a lot of these kind of functions we're going to deal with with improper integrals, you know, sometimes, well, maybe not sometimes, I'll say, against a vertical asymptote, they'll converge, and against a horizontal asymptote, they'll diverge, or the opposite, you know, they'll converge for one and not the other. This one's going to diverge for both of them. So I'm going to start by identifying what makes it improper, okay, it's the zero on this side and the infinity over here. Okay, I'm going to get an antiderivative. We know an antiderivative for one over x. Same antiderivative over here. Let it run from one to infinity. Okay. Highlighting the troublesome areas. And then I'm going to transform into a limit. Okay, so this is the limit as the lower bound approaches zero from the positive side of the log of one minus the log of a. And then this is going to be the limit as the upper bound goes towards infinity of natural log of b minus natural log of 1. Okay. Now, I tend to use a for the lower bound and b for the upper bound, but you can use whatever letter you want. That really does not matter. So we know that the natural log of 1 is 0, but the, log, the limit of log of a as a approaches 0, that's also not going to exist. On one hand, you could think about the vertical asymptote on the graph of y equals log x okay, as x approaches 0 from the positive side. We could think about what it means to be a log. You know, it means you're a special exponent. What special exponent can I put on e to get 0? There is no such exponent. So I'm going to say that this limit doesn't exist, and the integral diverges. Then on the other side, you think about the limit of the log of b as b goes towards infinity. Okay, well, there is no limit of log. Right? If you think about the graph, it just keeps growing, if you think about it graphically. If you think about it in terms of you know, being an exponent, what exponent do you put on e to get infinity? Well, you'd have to put a really huge exponent. There's no like finite exponent you can put on e and get infinity. So I'm going to say this limit doesn't exist either. And so this integral also diverges. Okay. Now I think it might be time for you to practice this yourself. So I've got an example for you, the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x minus 1 cubed dx. And I mean, I'm going to suggest, I'll get you started. Let's suggest you rewrite this as a negative power of x minus 1. It's going to be how we start a lot of these. Okay? Make our job easier, just use the power of okay? But I think you should try to take it the rest of the way and see if you can get yourself um, an answer. Okay, I'm going to tell you this one converges, this one exists, it's a finite number. And see if you can... See if you can figure out what it is. If you're watching at home, I think you should pause the video right here, work it yourself, and then compare your answer against mine, because my answer is going to pop up in a couple seconds. All right, there you go. So I found that this integral converged to 1 half. So I found an antiderivative. I transformed it into a limit. Okay, and as b approached infinity, this fraction here not necessarily the square of the fraction. I'm just talking about the thing on the inside of the parentheses. 
this fraction went towards zero because I was dividing by a larger and larger number. And then I squared it and I got zero squared and that's definitely zero. Okay, but I think that what the kind of the key aspect here was, was taking that x minus one to the negative two power and putting it back as a fraction. Okay, I think that's gonna be the type of thing that can really unlock some of these limits for us. Because me personally, I look at b minus one to the negative two, the limit of that is b goes to infinity, and I don't just immediately see that it's zero the same way that I can look at a fraction where it's one over b minus one as b goes to infinity, the denominator of a fraction goes to infinity while the numerator stays constant, that goes to zero. Okay, so that's just one trick I wanted to show you. Here's another one I'd like for you to try yourself. Integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x dx. Okay? Zero is not a troublesome spot here, right? We can take e to the negative zero, that's, that's still one. Okay? And the issue here is the infinity. So I think it would be a good exercise for you to try to anti-differentiate this yourself, try to transform it to a limit, and see what comes back. See, is it infinite or is it finite? And then you can check your answer against mine, which is going to pop up in five to 10 seconds. All right, there you go. So I found an antiderivative, which was negative e to the negative x. I had to account for the chain rule. And then I let the upper bound run towards infinity and found that difference. And I found that as b went towards infinity, this fraction here, negative 1 over e to the b, that's going towards 0, right? Because the denominator is growing, the numerator is staying constant. And then I plugged in 0, and I got negative 1. So I got 0 minus negative 1, and that's 1. But again, I was kind of going back into the fraction world before I went to plug in my bounds fin equation. I think, that's, I think that's an important step for us to take. All right, now I'm going to show you a couple other things that can happen that, you know, using the tools that we have in this class. We could have a, you know, a more difficult integrand. Although, for the most part, the College Board items that I've seen, they're mostly pretty simple integrands and they're, you know, really the difficulty is in the limit taking and the navigating the improper integral step. But this one is definitely an improper integral. It's got an infinity bound. And it's going to be one that I need to use, use substitution. So I see that the derivative of natural log x is 1 over x, and I have a 1 over x. So I'm going to let u equal log of x so that du is equal to 1 over x dx. Unfortunately, that's exactly what I have. I'm going to need to convert my bounds so I'll go from x's to u's using u equals log x. x starts at 2, u would equal log of 2. And then as x approaches infinity, u is also going to approach infinity. We've already talked about you know, how the limit of log x as x goes to infinity is, is infinity already in this video, so I'm not going to go into that anymore. And so I'm going to convert this to a u integral. So this is as u starts at the log of 2 and runs up to infinity, 1 over u du. Now we kind of already showed that this is going to diverge, right? Uh, we looked at 1 over x dx as x went from 1 to infinity, and this is not going to be meaningfully different. It's going to be exactly the same. But I'll show you again. Anti-differentiate, let it run from log 2 up to infinity, transform into a limit. So that would be the log of b minus the log of the log of 2. It's a weird number. But, you know, it's all right. And then from there, I say, okay, that limit doesn't exist. And so the integral diverges. Okay, so we can use u substitution for this also, right? We can also use udv on an improper integral. Okay, we can look at x e to the negative 2x dx. I don't see anything being the derivative of anything else. And uh, it's a product in the integral. So I'm going to need to use integration by parts. So I think to myself, I late algebra before exponential, so I'm going to let u equal x and dv equal e to the negative 2x dx. Okay, I take the derivative and the antiderivative. I remember that the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so I'm going to use all that. It's going to be uv, so negative 1 half x e to the negative 2x, as x runs from 0 to infinity, minus the integral from 0 to infinity 
of negative one half e to the negative two x dx. Now I'm not going to cancel off those negatives or anything because I know that there's going to be more chain rule happening, and I'm just going to you know, kind of deal with these separately. Okay, when I go, I, I want to go plug in infinity, but I know we can't be treating infinity like a real number, so I transform this to a limit. Okay. I'm going to call that negative x over 2e to the 2x. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to call it that, except I'm going to plug in b for x, okay. e to the 2b. Minus, and then when I plug in x equals 0, I get 0 on top and, you know, 1 in the bottom, or 2 times 2e to the 0 in the bottom. Okay, that's this thing. And, well, both of these fractions are going to 0, so that's not extremely helpful, but, you know, I can keep going. Minus, okay, find an antiderivative. Uh, it's going to be e to the negative 2x, and then I have to divide by negative 2 again for the chain rule. So I'll have positive one-fourth e to the negative 2x as x runs from 0 up to infinity. Okay. I know that as b goes to infinity, this, is, this fraction is bigger on bottom. Okay, so it's going to 0. 0 divided by 2 is also 0. So I've just got that 0 minus, okay, I'm going to keep using the brackets, one-fourth of, okay, well, when I go to plug in infinity, I need to transform it to a limit. Okay, so one-fourth of e to the negative 2b is 1 over e to the 2b. Okay, that's going to go to 0, minus one-fourth of e to the negative 2 times 0 is e to the 0. Okay, I know that this thing here is going towards zero. Thing in brackets is going towards negative one fourth. And if I'm taking negative of negative one fourth, I'll have positive one fourth. Okay? So we can use integration. My parts on these improper integrals as well. All right. Now the last situation I need to make you aware of is what to do when you have a vertical asymptote really properly on the interior of your region. And so the example I've got for that is actually the exact same example that we've already talked about. I mean, it's slightly different. It's a multiple choice question. If you're working along in the notes book, it's just on the next page. And while I'm copying this down, if you look and you see, and you're looking at any multiple choice questions, like you might be if you're following along in, in my notes book, if you were looking at a multiple choice question and you see a bunch of answer choices and then that last choice is non-existent or divergent, that should be a hint to you that you're dealing with a potentially improper integral situation. Okay? If this happens, we know that the actual troublesome spot is where x equals 0, which is right smack in the middle of negative 1 to 1. What we have to do is we must split it up into two separate integrals. So we would write that as the integral from negative 1 to 0 of 3x to the negative 2 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 3x to the negative 2. Okay. But I spent the first few minutes of this video explaining to you why each of these integrals would fail to exist. This one will just be three times as large and failing to exist. So I'm just going to tell you that if that happens, you need to split it out into two separate integrals, but I'm not going to actually you know, run through that in this video because that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. You need to practice these on your own. And so I would say, you know, I'm just going to cut you loose right now and tell you to get on with it. Start practicing.